So the presenter will be Yunhan Jia from uh, University of Michigan. Uh, Yunhan is a uh, fourth year uh, PhD student and uh, he is on the job market. Uh, hi everyone. Today I'm gonna present my work on the permission evolution of IoT uh, systems. And my name is Yunhan Jia and uh, this work is done with my colleagues in University of Michigan. Okay. Epified Appified platforms where the app development framework are open to third party app developers has achieved astonishing success in the last decade. And some recently emerging IoT platforms such as Samsung SmartThings, Apple HomeKit, and Android Things has also brought this idea to the IoT domain uh, to enrich the user's experience. Uh, however, uh, uh, although the promised benefit, it also comes with potential security threats. Uh, we have seen many attacks targeting on the uh, conventional Internet of Things. For example, uh, grudge monitors being turned into surveillance cameras and uh, smart refrigerators are connected to the botnet. Um, but since these devices are usually made by different vendors and are not interconnected with each other, these attacks tend to be device specific. Uh, however, on an Epified IoT platform, because an app can potentially uh, get access to all the devices, a malware, if being installed, can also uh, control all the devices, which may cause more severe security impact. Uh, let's take a quick look at the ecosystem of such common ip fed platform. Uh, we can see that a fundamental problem is that it allows untrusted code to run on the user's device. And a Common and widely adopted solution is the access control system, which is also called a permission system in many popular implementations. However, uh, many contemporary implementations have long been criticized to be having uh, several severe uh, limitations, and maybe some of you have already aware of that. And to, uh, as a quick recap, the installation time prompts uh, requires user to uh, make the permission granting decision at the installation time out of context, which is usually uh, uh, extremely hard for normal users. And a more popular uh, implementation called the runtime prompts, it won't uh, ask the user for permission until the app explicitly uses it. Uh, it puts the user into context, but it, uh, in practice, it, it fails in practice because it usually needs to compromise the security by only asking the user once as the first time when the uh, app requests the permission and won't ask again, which makes it cost grant and insufficient. Uh, here we show an uh, example that further uh, uh, explains that this current mechanism easily fell on the LT, in the LT scenario. Uh, an app called Press to Unlock lets the user to unlock uh, their door by just a, uh, pressing a button on their phone. And uh, once it, uh, the user grants the unlock capability to the app, the embedded malicious logic can abuse this permission to stealthily open the door uh, upon receiving a request from the attacker. And in this case, the context of the benign and the malicious passes are different. And uh, uh, our goal is to defeat such attacks. And uh, an important takeaway from here is that an ideal access control needs to be in context and uh, sufficiently fine grained uh, now we introduce a term called contextual integrity, which first appeared in the Washington Law Review and was advocated as a benchmark for privacy. Uh, we, uh, the, context, uh, the contextual integrity defined, uh, uh, it can, can also be defined in the access control domain based on the principle that a permission granted to an app shall only allow the app behavior under that specific context uh, during which uh, the permission is granted. More specifically, we can represent them as the, con the context when the permission is requested shall be the same as, a, uh, as the context when the permission was requested. And we also uh, uh, conclude the requirements for a context uh, in the user-driven access control. First, the context needs to be distinguishable with, uh, from each other so that a context-based fine-grained policy enforcement can be achieved. And the second, the context needs to be meaningful so that the user can tell benign from malicious. Uh, our work focuses on, focus on answering these two research questions. First, how to define the context in an access control uh, system for IoT and how to enforce its uh, integrity. 
To answer the first question, we extensively survey uh, attacks on existing IoT platforms and also mobile uh, platforms. Uh, because with the presence of the adversary who, tried, who will try to masquerade their malicious behavior uh, as benign to evade uh, detections, uh, a, a sufficient context needs to make these malicious behaviors distinguishable. So we, uh, we first categorize these attacks based on the adversary techniques they used and evaluate these attacks against some context definitions we extracted from some representative related work in the access control domain to come up with the essential context. We identify five essential components. Uh, first, the UID, uh, user ID, group ID is mandatory for app level access control. And the UI activity is also uh, widely used by many runtime prompts based uh, mechanisms on mobile devices. And the third, the control flow uh, describes how, uh, what are the events that trigger the execution of certain sensitive functionalities and is also critical for distinguished uh, malicious and benign execution passes. And the runtime value helps capture like, data leakages uh, as a runtime when the uh, leakage pass has the same control flow with the uh, uh, benign one. And also when some malicious adversary techniques such as shadow payload are presented, the data flow information, which is also called the data dependency, is essential to inform the user what are the data being collected from uh, so that they can tell benign from malicious. Besides, uh, another, uh, whether the decision making uh, is made in the context is also an important property. Uh, so based on these criteria, we align those uh, re uh, related work in this domain. Uh, for example, uh, a related work called Access Control Gadgets. Uh, it uses the UI activities as a major indicator for user to make decisions. And it puts user in, in the context, but it fails to consider other important context, context components. Another work called Creep um, provides a fine-grained context-based access control, but it allows user to set up the policy uh, as an installation time out of context. And unfortunately, we also found that uh, all this related work uh, fails to uh, uh, achieve all these properties at the same time. And we just propose our solution called Contextual, uh, which integrates all these uh, important context components uh, except the uh, UI activity, which is usually not available for the IoT apps because IoT apps is all about auto automation and usually won't interact with the user after the installation. Um, now we introduce uh, the, our design goal of context field, which is prompting user with essential context to grant access to the user's be, uh, desired app behavior. And we choose the Samsung SmartThings to uh, demonstrate our solution because it's a relatively mature platform with over 500 apps and 150 uh, uh, supported devices. More importantly, it shares some key design principles with other uh, uh, popular identified uh, IoT platforms such as Android, uh, Apple HomeKit, Android Scenes, and some all join. Um, uh, this, uh, Principles include, for example, they all have a certain level of access control and all support the popular trigger action-based program model and are backed in the cloud. But it also uh, presents us with a design challenge which is a limited access to the cloud-backed LT platform. And I will give some background here. Uh, in the user space of the SmartThings, Samsung SmartThings uh, ecosystem, all the IoT devices are connected to the hub, and, uh, but they cannot directly controlled by the user's app. Instead, all the control will go through the cloud backend where the smart apps and the virtual devices uh, will be running. And it's hard to enforce the policy here because we don't have the visibility into how this app run in the backend and don't have uh, the access to those uh, like OS or system information. Uh, instead, we turn to look at how these apps are developed. Uh, the third party app developers are required to submit their source code in the Groovy format through a, a web-based IDE. Uh, and uh, they will go through an app, instrument, app instrumentation process where the app's uh, source code will be modified to eliminate some dangerous language feature of Groovy. And we choose to implement our contextual approach here to intercept the app instrumentation process by patching the submitted source code with our uh, policy enforcement logic. 
uh, here is an example showing how the patching mechanism works. Uh, in an ori uh, this original LT app contains a, a benign logic which open a window when the temperature is higher than a certain degree, and a malicious logic which is open a window when the home mode turns to sleep, indicating that the user has gone to bed. And the patching mechanism first modifies the execution logic of the uh, sensitive action into an asynchronous way uh, that first uh, issue and permission request together with the context to the backend and resume the execution upon approval, during which other executions will not be blocked. And the backend permission server will maintain the mapping between the user's decision and the context. And if a context is unseen before, it prompts to the user and takes the user's decision. And the whole workflow can be uh, described as here. Um, uh, so to collect the context when the permission is requested, uh, context collection logic needs to be uh, uh, added to the, to the uh, smart app. And also to enforce the policy, some end-to-end -end logic need also to be patched. Uh, patching the app with the uh, context collection logic is uh, very much like how we uh, debug an app, debug, uh, debug a program by adding some logging code. And uh, in this example, if we want to know wh why the window will be open, what are the triggering events, uh, a naive approach is to add some runtime run logging instructions to the in entire uh, code set. Uh, but it will uh, uh, bring tremendous overhead since it may times the a length of code. And to reduce the runtime overhead, uh, contextual use offline static analysis to first identify a subset of code that requires uh, runtime logging. Uh, this is done uh, based on the control flow graph. It can prune the uh, code in the uh, control flow, uh, not in the control flow uh, graph, uh, passes from the entry points to those sensitive actions. And another uh, very important optimization is uh, pre-computation. To calculate some context information that are deterministic at the static analysis time. The intra-procedure intra context, uh, such as the branches and some local variable assignments, are, uh, are usually deterministic. So uh, context field will pre-compute them, and uh, they can be chained later in the runtime to construct the complete context upon the permission request uh, according to the runtime call stack. And uh, note that uh, the use of G-string, which is a dynamic feature in Groovy, uh, uh, much similar as the Java reflection, uh, needs to be handled in the, uh, using the runtime logging. Uh, to, to log the runtime uh, information, uh, Contextual implements a dynamic tent tracking for the smart things uh, groovy. The dynamic tent uh, shall be uh, field sensitive and to handle the class objects of groovy, and it also considers implicit tent, which helps capture those data dependencies that are not propagated by uh, assignments. Uh, for example, here is a, a, a side channel attack that a malware that can control the light bombs to use the luminancy as a set channel to send some sensitive information, for example, the occupancy of the house owner uh, to the outside. In mm, uh, this case, uh, ca this um, uh, suspicious behavior can only be captured by using implicit tent because it doesn't have a direct like, assignment uh, propagation. And also the tent tracking uh, maintains the caller information for each method. So, uh, as a point when the permission is requested, it can construct the call stack. And uh, thus, uh, the intro procedure context can be uh, chained or merged together to form the complete context. Uh, Contextual also patched up with a context-based permission requesting logic on the client app side and uh, have a permission server to manage the permission granting decision uh, as a backend. And, uh, 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 for more information, please refer to our paper about these implementations. And it will present, uh, here's an example of the presentation of the context to the user on Android. A user shall be able to distinguish uh, that the uh, open door, the lock, open lock uh, action uh, triggered by the timeout from the left-hand side 
uh, from the malicious uh, uh, open lock action from the runtime side, which is triggered by networking request. Uh, to evaluate the effectiveness uh, of our uh, solution, we use a data set consists of 283 commodity smart apps and 25 malicious smart apps created by ourselves uh, based on the evasion tax, tax, taxonomy. Uh, it also includes three reported instances of SmartThings malware from last year's Auckland paper. And the results show that the sensitive functionality of all the smart apps are correctly patched, while the malicious passes of this 25 malware can be distinguished without ambiguity. To evaluate the prompt frequency, uh, we use fast testing uh, approach on the, all the commodity smart apps by injecting uh, random events. And we found that the mean lifetime permission prompts are only 3.5, which may far uh, less than the, uh, lab, uh, than the frequency that may cause users annoyance. Uh, we, evaluate the, we measure the performance overhead uh, by using the event triggering latency. And we test on both virtual and physical devices because we don't own that much physical devices. And we found that the, uh, oh, the uh, extra latency uh, on the virtual devices is uh, around 26%, while the uh, latency on real physical devices is always below 10%. Uh, this is probably because the, the network latency uh, dominance in the real physical settings. For future work, we want to investigate into the better presentation of contacts in the IoT scenario to make users uh, make better permission granting decisions. And uh, also, we want to further improve and adapt our contextual design when the app functionality uh, is enriched. Uh, to conclude, we have a uh, a context definition that defines known uh, classes of malware on IT5 platform and proposes the contextual approach that helps enforce contextual integrity in IoT apps. And we also released our malware data set. Uh, and thanks for listening, and uh, I'm glad to take questions. Thank you.